Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, today's Mother's Day, so of course, happy Mother's Day to all you mummies out there. I hope you're having fun. Now, hear that? If you can guess what that is, just drop it down in the comments. Let me see. Oh, grew up in a country. But anyways, happy Mother's Day! Woo! Yeah. So, because today is Mother's Day, I decided that I'm going to do um, a video that talk about the things that I have learned since becoming a mom. So these are my personal experiences. It, it's not just what I'm saying, what motherhood is like in general, but these are just my personal experiences and all that jazz, right? So I write them down here so that I can have some structure to this video because I don't know some love rants I'm we gone all over the place see I'm already gone all over the place <laughs> anyways I have five of them so it's going to be five lessons that I have learned since becoming a mom these are not in any particular order by the way I just listed them down and whatever so the first one is you lose yourself or in my case you don't really find yourself and when I say that, it's like I got pregnant young at 21. And before that, I was, you know, you just come out of high school, you live with your parents, same way. You're still under your parents' rules, you're still doing what your parents want you to do. Because I'm in university, you know, I still pick me, right? So I never got the chance to explore who Kemisha was or what Kemisha likes. It's it's just what mommy want me to do, what sister want me to do, what this want me to do. What, it's just what everybody else wants. It's what everybody else expects of you. So I was still in that phase where I didn't really explore myself and explore what I liked and what I wanted to do. And then suddenly I had a whole new human being to take care of. And then I just went from that to being somebody's mommy, right? And then it just became being a mom and you're doing this for your child and you're doing this because you have a child and then it just become that. So then it, it led from being family-centered, like what family wants, to become what... A mother should be and so so and then I just never got the chance to like what what, what am I or who am I outside of all of that you know like all of that I never get to find it so um that's just one of the things that I learned like yeah you lose yourself and it, I don't say that like it's not all bad I would say but my advice or my thing would have been like to don't allow motherhood to define who you are and what you do love your children do everything you need to do for them but also make time for you and the things that you like right because at the end of the day you are your biggest accomplishment or achievement. You're your biggest objective, your goal. Like, you are supposed to be everything for yourself. So, take the time to find what you like, to explore, to just find the time and to just be yourself and to figure out who that is outside of like everybody else or everything else so that's one thing that i learned and one thing that i'm working on so yeah <laughs> um another thing that i learned is that um you take on your children's failures and you take on their accomplishments so if a married does something wrong then i feel like i did something wrong if he didn't 
get something right then I feel like I didn't get something right and it's vice versa if he has done something really good then I, I feel like I did something really good and it, it's just so every accomplishment that he gets I feel like oh my god that's me too I'm gonna feel like you know it, I, I feel all of that and especially the failures especially the failures they really knock you down like when whenever they don't behave how they're expected to behave or you expect them to know a certain thing and they don't know it or something like that then i feel like crap i failed like this is this is my fault or if they do something wrong or perceived to be wrong or rude or whatever then naturally i'm like oh crap probably I, 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 I am a, I, I, my fault. Um, I hold me appearing team. Why, why that's happen? If me never this, then that wouldn't happen. Man, yeah, yeah. I take on everything. I take it on, and I don't know how to not take it on. Like I don't know how to not take it on. So if you know how to not take it on, or if you experience that, like, tell me what for the because me take on everything, like everything. Me take things personal. Yeah. So that's two. Um, the third thing that I learned is being the, def the, the default parent. Being the default parent is hard. And when I say default parent, I mean the parent that um, is the go-to for everything. Um, whenever they feel angry or sad they come to you whenever anything happens at school it's you whenever they need to go to the doctor it's you whenever they need to bed it's you whenever they, everything right it's hard and it's very draining mentally and emotionally and physically right and it's just being a bit, being a default parent, it don't mean say uh, the other parent isn't around or anything like that. It just means that you are the go-to person. And constantly being that go-to person, sometimes it, it just it drain you right down. Because sometimes you just need a break. Because you have everything else going on around you in your life. And it doesn't matter what you're experiencing or what you're going through. You still have to be the devout parent. You still have to be a them. Wash them ear. Put on clothes. Wake them up for school. Make breakfast. Drop them off at school. Pick them up back from school. Um, go PTA meetings. Do homeworks. Do projects and assignments. And... <sighs> Guys, guys, listen. Anyways, but I take comfort in the fact that, you know, <laughs> they love me and they trust me enough with all these things that are happening to them, especially Amari. You know, Amari comes to me with everything. And sometimes I'm like, Jesus Christ, Amari, you know, take it down a notch. Yeah, take it down a notch. But yeah, being the default parents is. It is kind of hard. I'm not gonna lie. Because sometimes it's just, you just have to do everything all by yourself. And when you have to do everything all by yourself, when you don't have to do everything all by yourself, it's kind of hard. It's kind of hard and it's stressful. And then on top of everything, people are telling us, oh, you're so strong. You got this. Do I? Do I got it though? I don't got it. Right? And then I'm going to lead, this leads into the next thing, right? And that is, like the only thing you're allowed to feel as a mother is happiness. Like you're just supposed to always be happy. No matter where I go through, just be happy. Because be upset. Be upset. Be sad, no? Yeah, man. Feel anything except happiness. And instantly, you're like, oh, how are you supposed to feel that way? Are you going to have them? Nobody never forced you to have them. And, you know, like... Um, at the end of the day, I'm still a human being. I still have emotions. Am I just supposed to only feel happiness all the time? I'm supposed to just do their laugh, 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 and giggle, giggle, like every day is supposed to be. That is not healthy. So, it's like, because you're supposed to constantly be happy, when you're not happy, 
you can't express it because if you say oh you know i am so tired and i am so overwhelmed i'll be like no ma you got this you're strong you're a super mom no i'm not a super mom i am telling you that i am tired i'm telling you that i'm overwhelmed and then when you say oh you're tired and overwhelmed and some people are gonna say oh i just saw it go and i'm like yeah but Sometimes you can offer help. Some people can help in different ways. You know, it's just, oh, you feel tired. Um, go somewhere. Take them to the park. Or, but there's just, I don't know, offer something else apart from make it feel like, say, yo, I'm just supposed to just be happy and giddy every day. And I don't like that. I don't like that. If if you if you say you're tired, then you're not supposed to be tired. If you if you get angry, you're not supposed to get angry. Like Yeah, so that's very frustrating. I'm mean, gonna like that. And it that's just one of the things that I learned that is just <gasps> annoying. Right? I mean, not because your mother is means that tra tra we're allowed to feel other emotions okay please don't when when we express other things it's not necessarily complaining or saying that we regret having our children because we don't 95 percent of mothers don't regret having their children it's just sometimes things get hard and they just need an outlet so sometimes all you can do is just offer that listening ear without judgment that like literally that's all I, that, that's the point i was trying to get across earlier but about the things you can do just sometimes you just need to just they just want be able to rant and to talk and to let out all of this without you have to judge them and criticize them and all of that after like if that's what you're gonna do just just shut up your mouth and it's no matter all right okay Alright, how much were they? I don't remember. But I think that was five, don't. Alright, so the last one is there is no village. You know they say that um it takes a village to raise a child. In my experience, there is no village. Except when it comes to discipline. Like everybody has something to say when it comes on to disciplining your child. Like, all of a sudden, you're just entire village, you know? Beat them. Don't beat them. Um, you're too soft. You're too rough. Um, yep. Yeah, everything. But when you come on to anything else, all I hear are crickets. There's no support. There, there, There's nothing. Worst, worst, if you are parenting outside of the norm in your circle right so for example everybody wear black and you decide yeah we're white then there's no support for you because nobody understands what you're doing and they just expect you just continue following in that um part and when you're not following in that part then you, you just not have nobody right and I'm not saying I don't have people to help me. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that that village that they talk about is not there. So I have my mommy and my sister. Right? Mommy can call upon. But that, that's not a village. I don't consider that to be a village. Like, when, when I think of village, I don't just think about... Your immediate family i think about your friends i think about people at work i think about the church i think about the school like the village thing there it just not did it right there's no the, the, the for example if it belongs to a particular as i said before i meant about my own personal experience so if you have a village good for you but me now i'm none they belong to one church right and you're a member of the church and all that jazz 
nobody checks in hey how the kids are going to school how you, oh, anything happening you know no support i mean i mean say just financially because people have them life and whatever but not even as much as to offer some guidance and some counseling and some emotional support and you know like there's just nothing and the next thing which which kind of um wraps up into that as well is that motherhood becomes so lonely like if you're the only mother in your friend group then <laughs> it just it just feels like you're alone because everybody else is um not parents and so it's like they feel like oh i don't know how to interact with her anymore because now she's a mother so she have bigger problems to deal with than my petty things down here and i'm like no talk to me same way like i am still the same person we didn't know because obviously when i find myself so i'm still the same person so <laughs> but yeah i'm just saying it just becomes very lonely and worse as i said before if it the path that you're going down is not one that um, is what is typically accepted. For example, I want to be a gentle parent. I want to be a gentle parent, right? So, home talks, Amari and Jenny and homie. It's not like I don't like the whole beating thing, and then some of them just feel like it's ineffective. And there are other ways that I can navigate discipline. So, yeah. So it just, it hard. And sometimes, and Johnny, Johnny, Johnny don't gentle child in. <laughs> Johnny is far from gentle, I tell you. Yep. Mm -hmm. Johnny stress me right old because I'm like, how am I supposed to be a gentle parent with you if you're not gentle child in child? But yeah, it's it's motherhood is a lonely road to travel, a lonely road to travel sometimes because some of the things in that you want to do and you want to say like others around you don't necessarily feel the same way or want to do the same things. So then it's hard to find um like minded persons going back to the village you know <laughs> there's just that but yeah those are just some of the things that i have learned and these are personal to me as i said before so but i think that i also learned is that being a mom is life-changing i almost a life-changing i mean literally life-changing like you take on a whole new perspective on a certain things and if if for example you used to love fights because you have them pity you know you're like jesus man i told them the girl they know because can't left them god jail <laughs> It changes you like for me example girl used to sleep dead tell us to sleep dead sleep dead like old school out bundong everybody has scream bar blue murder still asleep no pin drop just one pin for drop and me wake up yeah and then you just certain things now you just think about more like you want to be better it's just you have a purpose now you have i have more purpose and you have like this drive inside of you something that's pushing you yeah so being a mom is absolutely amazing i love being a mom um i love my two kids to death love them love them love them but yeah it's not always rainbows and unicorns sometimes you get sad sometimes it's lonely you're angry and you go through all these you go you have your eyes and you have your lows 
you have your in between you have a time when you feel like yeah i got this motherhood thing and yeah i'm a bum ass mom and sometimes you're like jesus christ and you look and you, you look for the pin and you wonder say if when they grow up if they feel good recover from trauma because of how your parents <laughs> more i'm standing there say jesus wonder if a marian journey gonna be traumatized and when they grow up, they end up traumatized for them pitney and them affair got counseling and I recover because mommy traumatized them. Like I think about that a lot. <laughs> but yeah. Um this video is now almost 21 minutes. So I'm going to wrap this up. I was thinking about going live later just to to chat. But depends on what time we get the video for upload because that's our next thing. But anyways, if my, if I don't know if I might go live later with my two local people that might always stick by me, Chanel, Kesia, yeah, hello, hello. But yeah, um, I'm wrapping this video up. If you can relate to any other points that I made, then of course you can comment down below what you can relate to and all of that and also if you want me to go live later if you want to sit down and chat with me then um you can let me know so that's going to be probably like after six or so yeah but all right but don't know bye guys